Um, hello everyone, uh, my name is Mark from Digital Home Systems. Uh, welcome to the Favara Webinar Training Regarding Device Associations. Um, today we're going to be talking about uh, the two forms of associations that are most commonly used in Z-Wave devices, uh, one being scene association and the other being direct association. Uh, this is primarily going to be focusing on direct association as scene association is covered in more detail in um, the actual full Favara webinar training. Um, but other than that, you should get a good idea of what's actually needed for direct association. So firstly, what is actually the difference between scene association and direct association? So scene associations have high customization. Um, what that essentially require, what that essentially means is that you can have situations such as if you want to make it so your a device will only specifically trigger if let's say your humidity sensor has at a certain point at the say above 70 degrees and is also, uh, sorry, 70%. Um, and also uh, there is actually detection of motion in a certain area, then it'll turn with exhaust fan. Uh, generally useful certain circumstances such as uh, bathrooms, as generally you don't want mold growing on your walls from there being uh, too much humidity in the room. Um, the speed of the actual activation from it being triggered to actually the triggered device is based upon the actual speed of the controller itself. Um, if you have a, essentially a more lightweight controller that has a lot of processes going through it, you'd expect some essentially minor delays that pull up occasionally. Um, it can be used to associate both secure devices and secure devices um, with a home center two, oh, sorry, with a home center three, um, and Home Center 2, you're able to set up so certain devices are added in a secure mode and some devices are added as unsecure. Uh, direct associations can only be done between uh, matching security modes. So only secure device can, devices can communicate with secure devices and vice versa for unsecure devices. Um, the range of the direct associate, sorry, the range of the scene association is actually based on your Z-Wave mesh. So it's actually able to use your uh, mesh network of relay jumps in order to actually get between, uh, let's just say the triggering device and just going through relay devices through your controller. So from light switch to light switch or range extended to range extended to the actual device you want to be triggered. Um, main difference is that the scene associations actually require the control to be fully operational and within range. Uh, direct associates is done between two direct devices. So um, as you can see with this little diagram on the left, device one wants to trigger device two. It needs to go through a Z-Wave controller in order to actually trigger device two. If your controller is unoperable for some reason, it's actually unable to trigger device two and your scene won't run through. So direct associations. Direct associations have a bit more limited action. Uh, generally with most devices, you'll have uh, one or two commands for it, which is either um, set basic commands, which essentially is on off commands. So um, motion sensors detected, light turns on, motion sensor stops detecting motion, light turns off, um, things such as that. Certain devices do allow for a bit more customization such as um, making it so it will only receive either on commands or off commands. Um, this is useful in certain situations where just say something is detected for a moment or essentially a split second, but you wanna be able to actually keep a record of it being active. You can have such as a door read set in such a way that it will, when it gets opened, it'll turn the light on and that light won't turn off if it's being closed, no matter what, unless you manually switch it off. Um, the speed for associations, for direct associations, is based on the actual uh, range of the devices, as well as what security mode the devices are in. Um, if you include your devices in unsecure mode, you pretty much have a much faster speed. Um, if there is a security association, there'll be a small delay for it, but it won't be very noticeable. Um, you might expect about half a second or so of a delay for it, because it needs to actually send a command. Device needs The receiving device needs to make sure it's actually a correct command and then activate the system as required. Um, range for it is also based on the device. Um, it doesn't use the Z-Wave mesh network. 
um, as you can see by the little diagram I've made for it, um, even knowing the device was a device one can directly trigger device two, um, there isn't actually a connection between device one and device two by the Z-Wave controller. Um, you do have a need a Z-Wave controller to actually set up those direct associations though. Um, so you do you can't just simply get a, let's just say a Kubino dimmer or a Fabaro dimmer and set up in such a way as you connect it up. So um, one dimmer will associate directly with another dimmer. You would need a control to actually link those two devices. Um, one of the key elements that's actually very useful regarding direct associations is you can actually operate them when the primary controller is either down on operational or actually out of range. Um, this can be used in, you know, quite good cases in case you just want a light, um, for example, a light that's, you know, you only need two switches somewhere that's uh, far away from your controller and you don't want to be able to, uh, you know, have range extenders going out there. So you have an outhouse or something or a uh, back shed you want to still have associations for, you can still link those associations to them, put those devices out there, and they'll essentially trigger each other accordingly to the way you've set it up. So now we're just going to be briefly covering actually finding device associations. So most devices themselves will actually have device associations in their manuals. Um, if they're not in the manuals that are generally supplied to you by their you know, quick setup manuals, um, generally you'll find them in the advanced manuals, um, such as the Fabaro or the Fabaro flood sensor doesn't actually have its associations in its manual that comes with the device but you can just very easily find the manual either on our site or the virus site itself um, and essentially it lists what they are. So generally your switch ones that you actually want for it will be for a flood sense as an example. Uh, you want to look for ones that is, it'll give you a brief description for it. Um, but in this instance, um, what actually sends your on off command to your direct associated device is what's called the second association group or group two. Um, I'll show you how I actually said that later on as well. Um, so what that will do will essentially be turn on or off a device based upon the actual status of the device itself. So flood become detected, turns the device on, flood soft being detected, turns itself on. Um, certain, as I discussed before, certain associations um, can actually have configurations in the device itself. Um, as you can see with the Sobaro Dimmer 2, there is actually the ability to setting on its second or third association group, what do you actually want it to send? So you can make it so it will only send either on commands, it'll either send only off commands, it'll only send dimming commands, or we'll only do double click commands, which for your dimmer modules for multi-level sets, your double click commands are either off or on. So now I'm actually just gonna show you how to actually set direct associations. So each device itself under the actual Home Center 3 uh, heading itself um, actually has their own associations. However, each device itself um, even knowing, as an example, with double switches per se, um, you'll have a parent device and then you'll have child devices based off that. Uh, the Home Center 3 actually just links them all together. So if you set, uh, let's just say, group two association on your second reel of your double switch, it'll actually just copy it across the parent device and also the other child device. So you can actually keep track of them, um, which means you don't actually have to constantly try and find your parent device in order to set associations. You just need to know specifically what relay and what association group you actually want to run off that. So I already have a couple of devices set up on this controller. Uh, currently, none of the associations are set up. I just set them up in such a way that you don't get air splitting uh, rings from uh, tamper sensors or general alarms going off whenever things are detected. Um, my two actuating devices that I currently have is I have a dome flood sensor, which is actually connected up via a, essentially it has a little flood detector on it and a Fubara flood sensor. Now, Fubara flood sensor itself doesn't come with a essentially a you know a mobile probe for it. However, it does actually have ports on the inside that we're using that you can actually use to connect up your own flood sensor. So, what we just want to do very simply is we want to set up a association between two devices. So, let's just say uh, we want to make it so our flood sensor, uh, let's just say our dome flood sensor, will trigger active. Let's just see our water valve. Um, so the water valve is actually here. Um, it's actually directly behind me. You might see it there. Um, I'm just going to set up the association for it. So the dome leak sensor has zero endpoints for it. Uh, the association groups 
um, will load in and give you a brief idea for devices that aren't specifically for bar. Um, in this instance, it actually has core association groups. So there is the uh, sensor basic, sensor notification, and sensor binary. For this, because we want the set basic command of either on off, we can simply just choose this and then which device we want to associate it with. So specifically, we want to find the water valve. That's there. And then set the association for it. Now, battery powered devices actually require you to wake up the device before the association will be completed. Uh, powered devices will just set it after a certain amount of time, roughly takes about 15 seconds. So I'm just going to wake up this device. So he's able to send through his configuration. As you can see, it's loaded in and it's telling you the target device ID. Now, what I just want to do, um, at the current point in time, the water valve behind me is actually closed. Um, I'll simply just open it up. You can probably hear it. Apologies if the uh, sound is annoying, but water valves generally make that sound. Now, what I have is a small cup of water to my left and then the probe. I'm simply just going to dip the probe in. And the valve is closing itself up. So just a very basic association. Um, as I can just show you here, there is no scenes in the back end of this controller. So it's literally just going directly between those two devices. Um, another thing you do very easily set up for it is just say you don't just want it to turn on the valve. You also want it to give you some sort of, sorry, turn off valve, um, some sort of notification that something's actually happened. Um, in this instance, uh, what you can do is I will use a Fabara flood sensor, uh, associations, and then as we saw before, the basic the set basic command is also listed here, which is under flood control, which is group two. Now, instead of just controlling one individual device, you can actually control a number of devices for each uh, essentially endpoint or group. Um, generally, they're listed how many devices you can. The average is about five devices that you can control directly. So in this instance, we want to set two things. So for this, we will simply set, uh, let's say the first switch on the double set on the double switch, uh, which is actually located behind me as well. It's asking me to wake up. However, we want to set two of these at once. I can simply just skip this. Group endpoint zero, group two, double one, and then let's just say the siren to have set up a little bit away so you don't get ear splitting uh, noises. So it's asking us to wake up the device and simply wake it up. There we go. Um, bear with me one moment. I just need to wire up this. Um, as the flood sensor itself actually has prongs in the bottom of it, I don't really want to spill water on my table. So as such, I'm simply just going to wire up its actual external sensors with two bits of wire, as you would with a normal sensor. Uh, this device also does allow you to wire it up via 12 volts, uh, which, you know, always useful. Uh, generally not suggested the wire of 12 volts unless you have an actual extender on it. Now, something you will notice that I actually mentioned before, before you can actually set associations for devices, for battery powered devices, you have to wake that up. That also includes the actual endpoint devices you want to trigger, can trigger as well. So an example of this, if I were to simply just put these two wires together, you see the light turns on. However, I associate a siren to it as well. The reason for it is the siren hasn't been woken up yet. So all I'll simply just do is turn the siren on. Apologies for the chirping you'll hear. And now that device is woken up. So now when I connect it up, you can hear that and the lights turn on as well. As these devices are not set up in secure mode, you'll notice that the actual response time for them is actually quite good. So active and deactive. That's a quite useful thing you can do. Um, so you could connect up um, an array of lights. Um, you can also set up in situations where just say you have, um, well, let's, let's just say for an example, you have uh, two-way switching you want to do for a certain light fitting, but you don't have the ability to run additional cabling through the wall if you need to, but you still want to have two-way switching. You could associate two switches so that when one light switch comes on, it'll actually trigger the other one and essentially repeat the state for it to allow two-way switching. Um, in this instance, I actually have two switches for it. Um, I'll just choose the second contact on the double switch. Uh, set associations, endpoint zero. Now the groups for it on this guy didn't show, but it's actually group two, which is the second, the second relay. 
and the target device for it, which is the single relay, which is the device over there. So they set it. And now instead of having to actually wake up the device as those are mains powered devices, we can actually just wait for a second. And as you can see, the associates have been set. So I can actually do, give me one second. I turn on the second switch, that's the first. And second, why don't I turn it on? And off, on, and off. So that was actually quite quick speed. Now, some of it is quite useful to get direct associations. I did mention before that scene associations do require you to actually have the control operational. However, with direct associations, you don't need that. As such, I can reboot my controller right now. And while it's rebooting, I can still use that association. It's quite useful in certain situations where you might have ranging issues in certain areas of the house, but you still want to actually be able to set up a very simple connection between two devices. Um, you can set that up in such a way that, for example, you have a, a light switch at the top of your stairs um, that has one contact that turns the light on and off to say your hall lights, and the other one you can just use to actually just override your downstairs lights, which is um, without need of actually setting up scenes for it, um, which might take a process back end and so on. So, um, that actually brings us to the end of the presentation. Um, hopefully you all enjoyed it. Um, if you do have any questions, uh, you can contact us via those emails. Um, office will go to, uh, essentially office will be diverted to whoever's there. Um, Mark will go directly to me, the phone numbers for the head office. And at the current point in time, our showroom is not open uh, as for obvious reasons, um, but feel free to call us. Uh, email us and we'll essentially help you with any questions you have regarding direct associations and other support questions. Other than that, thank you very much for being here.